Today we are going to do the chapter 8 review. So first we're going to start with the vocabulary. So we have a fraction here and they're pointing to the top of the fraction and the bottom. Well the top of our fraction is a numerator and the bottom of our fraction is a denominator. So we can cross those two off. One sixth, they're talking about the whole fraction here. And it's got a one on the top. We know a one is prime, so this one is in simplest form. We could also say that this is a unit fraction. Now we have two fifths and four tenths. Well, out of all of these examples, it's going to be equivalent. But let's check to make sure. So if we multiply each side by 2, we get 4 over 10. So that makes them equivalent. Now we have 12 over 4. We know that if our numerator is greater than or equal to our denominator, then that is an improper fraction. And this one, we have 5 and 2 6. Well, that is a whole number and a fraction, so this one must be a mixed number. So we can cross off all of these. That leaves us composite and prime. Well, we have 4, 8, and 10. These are all even numbers, and I can divide each one of these by 2. So these ones must be composite numbers. While 3, 5, and 11, I can't divide those by anything and get a number other than themselves. So they must be prime. And we can check that with our prime and composite charts. All right, write an example of each of the following words. Well, so we can pick different numbers for these. And for factor pairs, I'm going to pick the number 12, and I need to find their factors. So 12 also equals 1 times 12, or 3 times 4, or 2 times 6. And those are our factor pairs. This 1 and 12, 3 and 4, and 2 and 6. Now we want to find a greatest common factor. So let's give two numbers. Let's do 12 again, and how about 15? So 12, our factors are 1, 2, 3, 4, 12 and 6. And for 15, our factors are 1. So 1 times 15 or 3 times 5. So our greatest common factor, well, that's going to be 3. What about least common multiple? So let's pick two other numbers. I'm going to pick 2 and 4. So let's find our multiples. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. And for 4, well, 4, 8, 12, 16, and so on. So our least common multiple, well, that's going to be 4. And benchmark fractions, those are things like 1 half, 1 third, and 1 fourth, where it's easy for us to compare fractions on either side of these. I know that 1 fourth is less than 1 half, and that 3 fourths is greater than 1 half. So it's easy for me to visualize what is bigger than 1 half. So that's what we call benchmark fractions. On to the next page. So we want to find the factor pairs of each number. So what times what equals 52? Well, we know for certain that 1 times 52 is 52. We also know that this is an even number, so 2 times something equals 52. And we can divide that in half. So 52 divided by 2, well, it's going to be 25 times 2 is 50. So that gives us 2 left and 2. So this is 20, 
six. So two times 26. And then also we can divide this even more because 26 is even. So we can do 26 divided by two. Well, we can do 20, that's by 10. And that gives us six. And then we have six because two times three is six. Six minus six equals zero, 13. So four and 13. And you can check that with a calculator. I don't expect you to know the factors of 52 right off the top of your head. Now let's do 36. This one I know you will know. So one times 36, it's an even number, so we can do two. So half of 36 is 18. We can use our number line to find that. 36, well three plus six equals nine. Nine divided by three is three, so it's divisible by three. We can use our divisibility rules to know that it can be divided by three. So it's three times 12, that's on our multiplication chart. And then, well, 18 can still be divided, so we can multiply by four. So 18 divided by two is nine. So four and nine is another factor. And then six and six, because that's one of our square numbers. That's one of those ones that's colored in in the middle of our multiplication chart. Number eight, they give us a pretty easy hint that this is a prime number because they only give us one space. So one times 23 is 23. Now we need to tell whether each number is prime, composite, or neither. So you're gonna to wanna to use your chart here. Zero is one of those ones that's neither. 31, well that's an odd number and Three plus one is four. Four isn't divisible by three. So this one must be prime. And 62 is even. So this one is a composite number. On to the next part. So circle two fractions that are equivalent for each set of fractions. So we have three fourths, nine sixths, and nine twelfths, and two sixths. So First, we're gonna to wanna to put all of these with the same denominator, or we can use our fraction bars. I'm gonna put this first one in the same denominator. So 12 is gonna be our denominator. So 3 fourths times three over three, because that's gonna give us a denominator of 12. So 9 twelfths, are those equal? Yep, so 3 fourths and 9 twelfths are equal. We can check that because 2 6, well, we multiply each side by 2 to get the denominator of 12. And that's only 4 twelfths, so this is not equal. Number 13, we can just use our zero trick. We can erase these zeros and see that that gives us 4 over 10, which is equal to 4 over 10. Now on to number 14. So let's put these with a common denominator. And I can tell that four times 10 is gonna give us a denominator of 40, five times four is 20, five times 10 is 50. Those are all pretty big numbers. So let's pick the smallest one and do 20. So three over five times four over four, because that gives us a denominator of 20, three times four, is 12. Okay, let's do our next one. So 1 fourth times 5 over 5, because that'll also give us a denominator of 20. That's 5 twentieths. Well, those don't equal, so it must be 6 tenths must equal something. So 6 tenths to multiply each by 2 to get a denominator of 20. 6 times 2 is 12. So the ones that are equal are three-fifths and six-tenths. Okay, write each fraction in simplest form. If it is in simplest form, write simplest form. Okay, so number 15, four and 10 are both even, 
So I can divide each side by two. Four divided by two is two, and 10 divided by two is five. That is our simplest form because I can't divide two by anything the same as five and get a whole number. Okay, what about three ninths? Well, each of these are divisible by three. So three divided by three is one, and nine divided by three is three. So one third is our simplest form. And we know for sure that's the simplest form because it has one in the numerator. Now what about three tenths? Well, the top is odd, but the bottom is even, so we can't divide it by three and we can't divide it by two. So this one is in simplest form. On to number 18. So we're comparing and we can check our answer with fraction tiles or number lines. Okay, so five eighths and one third. I'm actually gonna use those benchmark fractions we were talking about. So we have one half also equals four over eight. And so four over eight is less than five eighths. And I know one third is less than one half. So five eighths is greater than one third. And if that was a little hard to follow, use your number line and find where those bars match up. Now I have one fifth and four sixths. Well, immediately I see that one is a greater number than four, but that always doesn't count. So let's check with, we're gonna put these with the same denominator. So one fifth, and we're gonna multiply that by six over six. So we get the denominator of 30, get six over 30. And four six, we're gonna multiply each side by five. And that'll give us 20 over 30. And by multiplying by the other number, we know we're gonna get the same number on the denominator. So it's easy to compare. So 20 over 30 is much greater than one over five. Now, two thirds and eight twelfths. Well, let's simplify eight twelfths down. If we divide each side by four, because I know eight is divisible by four, because that gives us two, and 12 is divisible by four, that gives us three, then we see that two thirds is actually equal to eight twelfths. Those are equivalent fractions. Mrs. Evans has 13 pictures to hang on a wall. Is there any way she can arrange the pictures in rows other than one and 13 or 13 by one so that the same number of pictures are in each row? Tell whether 13 is a composite or prime number. Well, we could draw a model, but we could also look at our prime and composite chart and see that 13 is prime. So no, there is no other way for her to arrange these pictures because 13 is prime. So its only factors are one and 13. Number 22, there are two eighths a cups of peanuts and one fourth a cup of walnuts. Is there a greater amount of peanuts or walnuts? Explain. So we have two eighths and one fourth and we have to find which one is bigger. Well, I know that if I multiply four by two, I get eight. So we have the same denominator to make it easy for us to compare, and two times one is two. So there is actually the same amount of walnuts and peanuts. Mia has two whole bananas and one fifth of a third banana. Write an improper fraction that represents the amount of banana she has. So first we have to find our mixed number. We have two whole bananas and one fifth of a third banana equals, well, let's use that multiplication trick we just learned. Five times two is 10. So 10 fifths plus one fifth equals 11 fifths a banana left. It's a lot of banana. And I'm gonna leave number 24 to you where you write a real world problem to compare fractions. I wanna see what you come up with on this one. Now test practice, which equation is true? So there, we're looking for two and two thirds. 
I always find it easier to find the answer and then check to see which one it matches with. So I know that's going to be 1 plus 1 plus our unit fraction of 1 third plus another 1 third because we have 2 thirds. So which one matches up? Not this one, not this one, and not D. So our answer is C. And that is the end of chapter 8.